Do you ever stop and wonder how you can work, let's say, on the ninth floor of your office? Does it ever occur to you how the electricity travels and powers all your computers and appliances on said floor? If you ever thought about that question at one point in your life, then you're in for a treat because today, we'll be discussing how electrical works make the magic happen in high-rise buildings. Understanding Electricity – How Does It Work? Before we detail the process on how professionals design and coordinate the planning and implementation process of the electrical plans, we first need to discuss the nature of electricity. As we all know, it is a form of energy that powers all of our pieces of equipment and devices. They flow through channels that we call electrical conduits. But electrical energy does not travel through the wire as sound travels through the air, but instead always travels in the space outside of the wires. Then there are also two types of current, alternating current and direct current. The directional flow of electrons switches back and forth at regular intervals or cycles for AC, while in DC, the electrical flow is consistently in one direction. Before the construction of the building takes place, plans and several drawings need to be prepared by the architect, which also includes the preliminary planning of the power distribution. Every good design starts with a well-thought-out plan, made possible by a team of professionals, which usually consists of an architect and several engineers from different fields of science. Of course, we have an electrical engineer who supervises electrical works. But unlike residential structures, high-rise buildings are much more complicated since the electrical load for each occupant differs. In high-rise structures, like in condominium units, there are certain floors dedicated for commercial, utilities, and residential, to name a few. Each floor has its own air conditioning system, as well as fire protection, electronics, and even heating and ventilation, which should all be coordinated and taken into consideration when planning. Through all these, the electrical engineer can compute the overall electric load and the power distribution per area on different spaces. In addition to this, they also need to determine the requirements of the high-rise building, which require thoughtful planning, since there is possible change in either use for select spaces or the whole building. For example, it may be used commercially as of now as a store, but there's also the possibility that it can be turned into an office. And since we're living in modern times, there's also a need for the design to be energy efficient while also providing maximum safety and flexibility to adapt to future use. Next, the professionals need to comply with the requirements of the local electrical utility company. Once the electrical designs and power distribution are determined, the professionals are then required to submit their plans and coordinate with the local electrical utility company, who supplies the power for the building. Every high-rise building is equipped with multiple power sources, which include include feeds for normal power, as well as emergency or backup power sources, which are usually provided by on-site engine generator sets. Depending on the location, the local electrical utility company has several requirements and regulations that should be complied with. The LEUC supplies the structure with medium power voltage from multiple utility substations, although having a single substation is also applicable. Ideally though, it is better to have various substations so the reliability of the main electrical system can increase. The power supply will enter the structure from below grade and usually terminates in the main switch room. The next step is to determine the location of the electrical room. The location of the electrical room also varies depending on what the LEUC requires, but usually, electrical rooms are located in an area accessible by a select few and away from the main rooms. The electrical engineer will also take note and comply with the design requirements and other specifications for compliance. Now we move on to providing voltage supply and locating the service entrance. From the name itself, the service entrance is where the wires and conduits connect to the load side of the meter enter the building. For residential buildings, it's usually perceived as a fuse box or breaker. However, for larger and complicated projects, it can be a trough where main switches are placed or the main disconnect panel. Since the structure will serve multiple occupants, the electrical engineer needs to coordinate with the LEUC on the specific requirements for the pieces of equipment for the service entrance as well as its location. We've mentioned before the LEUC will provide the medium voltage supply which needs to be transformed to the utilization voltage that may vary depending on your location. For the US they are usually 480 volts while Asia and Europe use 400 or 380 and Canada with 600 volts. Generally the transformers are placed at or below ground level but for high rise structures it's insufficient to place them in the same location. As a result the architect and engineer needs to work together in determining the ideal location for the transformers and in some instances transformers are also placed in upper levels to accommodate the upper parts of the building. 
With the architect designing most of the spaces, the need to allocate service rooms, spaces, and risers are also tasked to the architect in coordination with the electrical engineer. With a large electrical load to provide, the service rooms for high-rise buildings are also quite spacious, which is a challenge for the architect, who needs to consider that the spaces can house several pieces of electrical equipment as well as for its maintenance. These rooms need to be designed properly, since they will also contain several pieces of equipment from different systems such as power distribution panels, feeder and plug in busways, emergency lighting supply panels, security system equipment, and cables and conduits, just to name a few. Aside from the planning of the pathway for cables, conduits, and service spaces, the architect and electrical engineer also need to take note of the structural constraints. It's a common practice to embed electrical conduits into concrete structures, although it presents more of a challenge to structural engineers for high-rise buildings. The structural and electrical engineer need to discuss this thoroughly since the conduits may be embedded in the slab, hence the need for structural structural engineer to compute the slab thickness. You may be wondering, how does the lighting operate in tall structures? Designing the lighting layouts for high-rise buildings also takes a team effort, which also includes the architect, a lighting specialist, and even interior designers. For specialized lighting designs, the electrical engineers are also tapped in to coordinate these aspects. And since we're speaking about lights, there's also a need to incorporate aircraft warning lights into the building design, especially in places near the airport. In the US, every tall building is required to comply with federal administration requirements, whereas everywhere else will abide by the International Civil Aviation Organization's requirements. These lights are usually red, although sometimes white, which serves as a warning beacon at the top of the building and at the middle level as dictated by the standards. Another thing professionals include in their design is a lightning protection system. Although not frequent, lightning strikes high-rise buildings every now and then, and so to provide safety, the incorporation of a lightning protection system is adapted to local standards. An excerpt from the Consulting Specifying Engineers website described the process as, the lightning protection system will form a Faraday cage around the building. The architect and engineer must work together to ensure that the copper grid placed at the roof level is adequately secured. The electrical engineer must work with the structural engineer to locate the down conductors that direct the lightning energy to the earth. So if you ever wondered how electricity managed to power with your appliances, several professionals and consultants banded together to provide lighting and power in your area. In a nutshell, electrical works entail a lot of planning and extensive research work. Designing high-rise buildings is a complicated and stressful process, but when all said and done, you'll be in pure awe of how the professionals managed to bring forth a towering structure from the ground up. With that, we're wrapping up today's video on how electrical works and high-rise buildings work. But for budding electricians out there, we've got some news for you. If you're already an electrician running your own business or just about to start and grow your own electrical business, you must learn the four critical things electrical business owners wish they had learned before starting an electrical business so you don't make the same mistakes. Electrician Accelerator has put together a free training video that you can watch right now that will show you exactly how to start, grow, and build your electrical business the right way so you can consistently guarantee profitable work, free up your time, all whilst reducing stress levels and allowing you to have a sustainable and more profitable business that works for you. In this free training video, you will also learn how to generate a steady stream of jobs on demand and with predictability month after month in your local area without relying on word of mouth and referrals. How to stop competing on price with other electricians and escape your competition. How to convert at least 90% of your quotes and estimates into sales. How to command premium prices and attract high quality customers that will be happy to pay more. Click on the link in the description below the video.